Hey, Bridge Church family, we are glad you are with us again for 21 days of prayer. Um, my name is Lucas Ashley, one of the pastors here at the Bridge Church. Um, and this season, twice a year, we do a 21 days of prayer. And this year, because this year is a little different, we decide to do it a little differently. And so we're just inviting some familiar voices in our life to come speak into you. And so with me today um, is the person that I have argued with most of anyone else in my life, only because he is my flesh and blood, my brother, uh, who, yes, is also a pastor, but has more hair than I do for some reason. Um, and that is Zach Ashley. Hey, buddy, how are you, brother? Good. Good, man. How are you? Dude, thanks for, uh, thanks for the time. You, I have the hair up here. You have the hair down here. So. <laughs> That's right. I'll take it. I'm okay with that. Um, Zach, tell everybody, where, where are you? What are you doing right now? Yeah, so uh, we live in League City, Texas. So we're right outside of Houston. Uh, I serve as the executive pastor at Bay Area Church. That's awesome. Yeah. So for all those who kind of know, you know, we've, we've been here for about two and a half years. We actually left Texas about four, three or four months after my brother and his family moved back to Texas from Virginia. Um, so maybe God just thought too many Ashley's in one place. I'm not really sure. Uh, we're still working through that, but, uh, but it's, it's fun to get to share this with as a life thing with, with him for sure. So, um, well, man, so we've been doing, we just finished a series called dangerous prayers and it's based on Craig Rochelle's book. Um, and we've, we've really been asking these questions. Okay. All prayer is good, but there's obviously, there's a difference between just a prayer of thankfulness. Um, and then there's a difference in these prayers that really kind of command or demand a, a more intimate response from our life. So we've, like, we've talked about God, break me, God, send me, um, God, save me or know me. Um, and so we really thought as our church is journeying into just a new season of intimacy in our prayer life with God, we really thought it'd be awesome just to hear some stories and some wisdom uh, from some other godly men and women that I think have impacted our church through our pastors and staff in some non-direct ways. So what, what's a way that God has used prayer to shape and challenge y'all's life? Or maybe what's a specific prayer that God did something through? Yeah, I mean, God is God is constantly. And I was thinking about this, and since we talked, you know, God's really been, uh, you know, numerous times in my life. There's been prayers that have had, you know, significant change with them or significant steps of obedience. But probably the one that comes to mind uh, most most clearly uh, involves the adoption of our uh, our, our little girl Layla. Um, so um, it's a long story. I'm not gonna be really short with it, but. Um, you know, we, uh, we had two biological kids, um, Peyton and Piper. And then, at, you know, at that point we were done. So they were about 10 and seven, you know, at this point. And so, you know, we were done with kids. And so I was serving a church, uh, actually Mount Ararat church in Stafford, Virginia. And I was there and the church really began to, uh, think about and focus around the, uh, just the, the gospel call of orphan care. And, you know, how are we as followers of Jesus? supposed to respond to the, the need of the orphan. We see that all throughout scripture. And so through one of the staff members of the church, you know, we really started focusing on that. And, and kind of long story short, it got me and Kristen, my wife, thinking about, um, you know, what's our call? And really the, the dangerous prayer was more of a question to God as, as much as it was a command from God. And it was really this question of, okay, God, what's our role? Um, what's our yeah. role for the orphan? And, and really, you know, like at that point, like I said, we had two kids that were kind of grown. We were kind of past the point of having any more. Um, and God began to work in her life and my life in, at the same time, in the same way, but we didn't know it. Um, so I started asking that question um, on an Orphan Sunday, you know, special service we had of God, you know, what, what's our role? Um, I was thinking, honestly, all right, we're going to give money to an organization. We're going to maybe sponsor it. <laughs> Um, you were going to give money to people that are called to adopt. And uh, God told us, well, your role is adoption. And mm. that dangerous prayer of God, you know, listen, what do you want us to do? Let us on this lifelong journey where, I mean, God has just been so, so faithful to us. And, you know, it kind yeah. of started, we began praying about it. We began thinking about, okay, God, um, do you want us to adopt? Okay, great. Where do you want us to go? We you know, did the thing, we pulled the map out. You know, the world where you want us to go, and it's like, all right, you're going to adopt in China, um, and you're going to adopt from the waiting child program, and you're going to tell everybody about it. So, in the matter of like November to December, 
And we told everybody, hey, God's calling us to adopt. And then as we were just praying about it, God just out of nowhere said, but not yet. And so mm-hmm. we had to kind of reel it back. Yeah, I remember. You know, every conversation of, hey, we're adopting. It's like, how, how's the adoption going? It's like, well, for whatever reason, we're not right now. And and that was really a step of faith. And we kind of put ourselves out there. And you shouldn't care what other people think, but we all do, right? Um, yeah. And so it began this waiting journey for us of about three years where we didn't feel like God said no. He just kept saying not yet. And we didn't really know why. Mm-hmm. I mean, part of it practically was we're getting older, you know, and I never wanted to be the guy who drops their kid off at kindergarten and they go, Hey, your grandpa brought you today. (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, that's that's such a small thing, but just all of that was wrapping around in this idea of of having to wait. Well, it kind of fast forward three years. uh, It was another orphan Sunday at Mount Ararat where God just spoke to both Kristen and myself and said, you know what? Um, It's time. And, It wasn't international. It was domestic um, and it wasn't, you know, um, the same, but it was going to be really specific. And from that point, uh, fast forward to less than a year from that, we got a call um, about a little girl named Layla who was born uh, right outside of Richmond, Virginia. And um, birth mom hadn't a chance to choose a family yet. Layla was a couple weeks early. And so, you know, all this stuff was going on. And so time frame and timeline, all that stuff. Um, was kind of out the window. We had to had to respond, and uh, yeah. God completed our family uh, with this little girl. And that whole process, though, of just having to trust God, and really our mantra be, became faith over fear. You know, Second Timothy one seven, God's not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And that that prayer was just one where we had to constantly say to God, God, what do you have for us, and mm. uh, what's it involved waiting. It involved worrying some. It involved a lot of prayer. Um, but yeah. man, God revealed so much to me and our family about Him and uh, and His provision in that process. So that's probably yeah. the big for us when you think. I think about a dangerous prayer that that God God asks yeah. us to respond to. Man, I love that because there's so much. I mean, there's you I know mean, we're a little getting short on time. There's so many little lessons I think in that from. You know, just even that first step of, all right, God, I'm, I'm not going to give you my comfort. I'm just going to give you the fullness of whatever you, you open. It is to what, it, you know, maybe for us, it's like, all right, well, yeah, I'm, I, I can pray for sure. You know, I can give a little money. And I think as a church, you know, everybody who's watching, we all have different comfort levels of engagement with the gospel. You know, for some of us, we're, we're gifted in prayer. We're gifted in generosity. Um, some of us are gifted in serving, but sometimes those giftings are also our comforts. And I think I love, that's what I love about y'all's stories. It's like, all right, yeah, we'll step in. We'll pray about what God wants us to do, but never would you think he wants you to go the full hundred yards of, you're not just going to give, uh, you're not just going to serve. You're not just going to pray. You're actually going to go the full step and you're going to bring a child into your family. Um, and you're going to show her what the love of God is firsthand, you know, through the way that you parent, through the way that you adopt. Um, there's such a gospel driven aspect in adoption anyways. And so, um, man, I, I love that. Thank you for sharing the story. I, I wish they could have the expanded version because <laughs> I remember even a lot of the wrestle after the fact of, is this really going to stick? We've met the girl. Are we going to keep the, this, this little baby and, and just the whole process, man. But, uh, uh, thank you church. I hope you found some encouragement in that. I know someone out there is you got something where you've been, you've been praying through some things with God of, asking and opening your heart to that. And hopefully this didn't scare you away. <laughs> hopefully it's even a more draw encouragement of what can come because again, it's, we talk about how generosity changes lives. And I know that for, for, for my family, my brothers, uh, his wife and his kids, the generosity they had to open their heart and a home. It's not just changing Layla's life, but everyone whose life Layla touches is going to change through it too. And it all started with just that. Yes. And it's a beautiful thing. So man, Zach, we do a favor. We just pray that over our church, maybe of just that, that prayer of even just that more extreme generosity, that willingness to take whatever step God puts in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Awesome. Uh, Father, you, we, come to pray, um, we, we thank you that you're a God who is a perfect father. Um, you're a God who is in control of all things uh, you provide. And God, you call us and you use us as imperfect people uh, to be part of your perfect plans. And so, God, I, mm-hmm. I pray for the church, God, I pray for it, for those that are listening today. And God, maybe they're at a place of just saying, God, I'm not sure what to do about a situation. Uh, God, that they would open their hands and their heart and just say, 
God, what do you want me to do? And God, in that, that they would find your your direction, God, your peace, your provision, God, your power. Um, and God, they would see uh, both in the small ways and the big ways, God, that how you how you can use and are willing to use uh, a faithful, open, willing servant to do things that are, are so, so me- much even bigger, God, than maybe they can imagine. God, I pray for this church. I thank you for their, their just passion to seek after you. I thank you for this conversation and just pray, God, that you would encourage them today. You would strengthen them. And I just give them that, that generous spirit that says, God, whatever you have is what I want. And just give them the, 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 the courage, God, to walk that road and walk that journey. God, knowing that you're a part of every piece of it. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, man. Hey, tell Kristen and the girls, we love them. Miss you guys. Um, yep. And uh, church, we love y'all. And we will see you guys later.